Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So as y'all know, I like to acid stone wash many of the blades that I make. It is a finish that you can put on a knife that is very durable and also in my opinion aesthetically pleasing. So in order to do an acid stone wash finish, most of the time you need a container to put your knife in with a tumbling media or rocks so that you can shake the rocks and your knife together and create that nice stone wash finish on your blade. I have an entire video on how to stone wash a knife that I'll make sure to put in the cards. But I have been shaking manually the blades in my uh, rock tumbler bucket. So this is what that looks like. Now, you know, it's not the end of the world to do this. It only takes about five minutes per blade. However, that does start to add up over time. I just so happened to be following a channel on YouTube called 927 Forge, and I think he is an Asian knife maker. He makes some awesome knives. Go ahead and check out his channel. But I was watching one of his videos the other day, and he had an ingenious mechanized tumbling system that he uses his 2x72 inch belt sander as the power for. So with his inspiration, today we're gonna to be building a mechanized rock tumbler for stone washing your blades, coming up. So we're gonna start off by going over some of the components of this build. You're gonna need a container that you'll be putting your knife and your tumbling media in. Uh, you'll also need two casters along with a piece of wood. So. I'm actually using a, a very thin piece of wood here. Uh, I will upgrade that wood later on in the video. I actually build this tumbler twice. Uh, more of a proof of concept at first, and then I take it apart and assemble it with a little bit more stout piece of wood. I'm also going to be utilizing uh, two pulley wheels. I had these left over from an old project. So I'll use both of the wheels uh, of these pulleys, and then a piece of uh, plastic here, a piece of PVC pipe that the wheels will fit in. Uh, this will be what the tumbler uh, rides on. And then lastly I have a piece of quarter inch uh, by 20 thread all thread. And then uh, oh yeah I have uh, some rubber bands and then uh, some pieces of plywood to fit on the ends to act as a guide. So the first step is uh, measure out your tumbling media and make sure that your casters uh, are contacting the bucket or whatever you're tumbling in, uh, contacting them about one or two inches in from the edges. So I did that and then I, I labeled where I'll be drilling my holes for these casters. I'm then gonna mark out the guide pieces of wood on the side. This is what's gonna keep your tumbling bucket centered. So I'll mark out where those are gonna go and then I'll put down a piece of material here so that I can mark out how tall I want the bucket to be sitting. So this is going to give me an idea of where I'm going to put uh, that PVC rider with the pulleys inside of it. Then I'm going to drill some holes here to accept my casters. Uh, in this case, the first go around, I utilized some quarter by 20 bolts uh, just to kind of mock this thing up and, and see if it was going to work for me uh, before I put some time into making it a little bit nicer. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and cut out the pieces that we'll be using for our side guides. Uh, so I'm just making sure that they're lined up here and screwing them in with some deck screws. Next we're going to go ahead and drill our two pillars. Uh, these two pillars are going to be utilized to hold our piece of quarter inch all thread uh, that our roller will ride on. And this roller is going to be what supports our tumbler uh, so that it will be supported in one spot by our roller and in the other two spots by our casters. So this is the first round of me putting this together. I end up uh, having a little bit better configuration on the second round. I put a spacer in between these two pulleys uh, so that they won't come close to each other. Uh, but I'll show that uh, later on in the video. So as a proof of concept, this is uh, how it works. You just have this little roller here and roll it. Now I did kind of a cheap and dirty job here. I used my belt sander to create a, a gap in the center of the board so that I can choke this whole assembly up onto my platen. So here lies a major problem of this first design, and it's the container I was using. You can notice already that the outside walls of the container are very soft, and they're actually kind of conforming in to the casters 
and the roller. So I eventually uh, test it with this container and it doesn't work very good. So the next step is to build a new tumbling uh, container to use and I ended up using some PVC pipe. I cut out my PVC pipe so that it would be the appropriate total overall length to fit into my tumbling jig. I utilized a piece of threaded um, cap here and I really I really don't like how that turned out because uh, it's not very even uh, the whole assembly. And you can see that here. I went ahead and purchased another cap and did a dual cap design and you just have to kind of wiggle the cap off whenever you want to change the blade that's inside of it and that worked way better. So I want you to notice here during the operation how bouncy and wobbly this system is. There's a lot of flex in that thin piece of board. So the next move was to take this whole thing apart and then rebuild it on a more substantial piece of plywood. So that's what uh, that's what you see me doing right here. Now on the next piece, uh, I, I did the cutout a little bit more professionally. I drilled some pilot holes. Um, I tried to make it a little bit nicer because I know I'm going to be using this tumbler uh, a lot with my knives. So I get that uh, groove cut out there so that I can choke up on my belt sander and the casters can have clearance around the platen. Get my casters screwed back into this piece. My side guides on. And then finally, this is the new assembly I put together for my roller. Notice I had a little uh, sleeve in the middle of the two wheels to keep those wheels separate from each other. So now that we have the roller assembled, I went ahead and tested this guy out. So it took a little while to get the appropriate distance from your belt sender right. You want the rubber bands to be slightly resting on the belt. And then I'm running my belt sender around 5 to 10 percent. Uh, on the VFD dial. But you can see it's uh, rotating pretty good here. I'll give you a couple different camera angles of the system. It has much less flex than my first prototype had. And uh, this thing's operating exactly the way that I would expect it to. So now that we have a proof of concept, the next step is to go ahead and put the rocks in. So I went ahead and cleaned off the rocks I have been using over the last year. Uh, these are just general rocks from my backyard. So there's nothing special about this. You could use some ceramic material or tumbling material in this tumbler and that would work just fine as well. So major thanks to 927 Forge for putting out the videos of his process and showing me this amazing time saver uh, for stone washing your knives. I have really utilized this extra time that I have in my shop to do some productive things here and there. So let me know what y'all think about this design in the comment section below. It's worked pretty good so far. I've used it on about five knives now and it's just trucking along. There's no damage to the rubber bands and the tumbler leaves a very nice finish on the blade. I've been keeping it in there for about 10 minutes at a very low speed on my belt sander and the results are great. Also, for all you guys just getting into knife making, I have a how-to playlist right here that I've put together for uh, beginners and intermediates alike. I'm hoping that the tips and tricks that I learn, I can pass on to you uh, through playlists like this. So, and also hit that subscribe button right below me to get new content uh, coming up every week. So with that, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.